and I see where you're coming from. You're saying that uh, you have a lot of experience with this and, and you've been able, and I think you said you've been able to help a lot of people with this to the extent where, um, you know, people, you, you've studied shamanism and people have come to see you and they've gotten help from you and through uh, shamanism, you're able to uh, help, uh, you know, s symptoms and issues like PTSD and things like that. And, uh, and it seems like you are helpful to people. Let's suppose that Tony is sitting next to you and Tony believes that he can do, and this will help me understand your belief better, I think. And Tony believes he can do all those things by, um, let's say he has two magic rocks that he has and he rubs them together and he believes that he can do those things with his rocks that you can do with your beliefs in shamanism. If Tony's belief, let's say, is not true, okay, for the purposes of this thought experiment, this conversation, Tony can't do that. He can't rub two rocks together and do this. But he believes it. Is there a way we could show him that his belief is not true since it's not true? Sure. Okay. So, you know, for instance, was the ghost in my house gone? Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. that would be evidence. And if you did a thousand of them, then, you know, you could statistically say 100% of these thousand ghosts are gone, you know, and you would have that data that would demonstrate that, you know, your psychopomp work was effective and you could cross, get rid of ghosts. Or if you have people with... And if he could get rid of ghosts mm -hmm. and, he, and, he, and he thinks he could and he, and in his mind, he had a ghost and he could get rid of it, would... Would we, what would we say about Tony's belief? So if we, if we went into, um, if we, let's say we find a thousand houses with ghosts, people yeah, are complaining yeah. about ghosts, right? Yeah. So you take 500 of them, you send Tony into 500 of them. Okay. You send me into 500 of them. Oh, okay. Them, right? Yeah. And then, you know, Tony goes in the house and rubs rocks together. I go in the house and do this psychopomp work. Okay. And then you go back to the house, whatever, a month later, and you say, is your ghost gone? That seems like a great test. Right. So if Tony and you both went to 500 houses that have ghosts, and then afterwards he'd tell you how many ghosts were gone, and you tell us how many ghosts were gone, and then we'd be able to have an answer. Now, if for some reason Tony was able to eradicate more ghosts than you, would we say, what would we say then? Would we say that Tony? So then we would say rubbing rocks together gets rid of ghosts. Then rubbing rocks together gets rid of ghosts. And if we, just, if we said that it's not a true belief, as we did, then, then how are we saying that this is happening? What, what, how are we saying that he is coming up with his answer, that he's gotten rid of more ghosts than you? And we know his belief is false. So it's easy. Then you go back to the houses. Is the ghost still opening drawers and slamming doors? You know, oh, that yeah. hasn't happened for months. So the ghost is gone, right? Right, right. So then it... There's, it's no longer about, that's a scientific way to figure out if something works. Okay. Because then you're asking the people who have the ghost in their house. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to do a blind study, then you don't tell them which person is coming in their house. That's a perfectly good point. And for whatever reason, if Tony is able to get rid of more ghosts, even though we know, we somehow know that rubbing rocks together doesn't do this, then what are we to say about his belief at that point, do you think? Hmm. I mean, maybe it has nothing to do with rubbing rocks together. Maybe it has something, nothing to do with rubbing maybe rocks Tony together. Maybe just scares ghosts out of houses. Yeah. Maybe he's just yeah. born that way. Yeah. He walks in a house and all ghosts run away. But either way, it works, right? If that happened. Now, what if someone, and I'm not saying this is the case. What if somebody said that about your belief that whatever it is you're doing, it works maybe not for the reason why you think it's working. Like maybe you're helping people with PTSD for whatever reason, but maybe it's not for the reason you think it is. Maybe there's a second best reason. So that doesn't matter to me. Oh. Right? If, if somebody feels better. Yeah. If somebody feels safer, more at home, and I don't care. Yeah. I could care less why it works. Yeah. So 
I think you're saying it doesn't matter so much whether the belief is true, it's more so whether it works, whether the person gets rid of their PTSD or, or you're helping them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that I can help people. Yeah. And I believe others can help people. And it really, the medium doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you do it. Yeah. It just matters that it gets done. Right, right. So if you were helping people, let's say with PTSD, and it wasn't for the reason you thought it was, and maybe there was a second best reason, I'm wondering what the second best reason, if there was a second best reason, would be. So an example of how to help people with, you know, as I was getting ready to talk about soul retrieval. So you've been in this car accident, right? You were, oh, let's say you were 16 years old when this happened. Okay. Right? You don't really remember it. Okay. But ever since then, you haven't quite felt yourself. This is something people with PTSD say all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, since this event, I haven't felt like myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So what happens when the shaman goes to find the soul fragments that are out there is I would go into this system that I use and I would um, go along your timeline and I would find you at 16 years old and I would see the event. Normally I can see, you know, the car you were in, what you were wearing that day. You might be standing by the road. I can see the intersection and describe it. And then I will go find that piece of soul and ask it to come back. And then sometimes, you know, you tell people what happens. Sometimes you don't because some people just think that's like too far out and they don't want to know. But it's more helpful if you do tell them. So if I were to say to you, and you for, had totally forgotten about this near miss accident, right? And I were to say to you, okay. Mark, when you were 16, you were driving in a Monte Carlo, a blue Monte Carlo, and all of a sudden this truck showed in front of you and you thought you were going to die. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were wearing your blue suede shoes at the time, and I can give you all this information. All of a sudden you're going to go, oh, my God, yes, that was exactly it. That day, that's what I was wearing. True, true, true. <clears throat> and then you're going to be... <clears throat> excuse me, then you're going to be really attached because you're going to say, I remember that scary moment. And you're going to say, I, wow, I, I really want to embrace that scared part of myself. Mm -hmm. And once you do that and kind of bring that home, okay, then you will feel more whole. Yeah, I see how you would employ your treatment to someone who has PTSD. And let's say there's a group of people who've had PTSD and half undergo, th undergo a shamanistic point of view treatment. And let's say half go through a cognitive behavioral regimen. Mm -hmm. And let's say that the PTSD treatment that you do is more effective than people who do cognitive behavioral therapy or undergo cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, would you feel more confident in your belief if that's what happened? Well, that's usually what happens and it's easier too because when you go through cognitive behavioral therapy you have to keep reliving the event mm -hmm. and so you know the trick with ptsd is to try to disconnect the memory from the emotion because that's what happened people people get panicked because you know something will trigger the memory and that high level of emotion and fear is still there connected wired to their body <clears throat> and so when you're doing cognitive therapy, you have to relive it over and over again, and they try to make it less and less. It's a long, tedious, and painful process. But with the shamanic work, you can do it really quickly, and they don't have to, like, hammer it over and over again. So it's, an, it's kind of an easier surgery, too. So I think what you're saying is, is that if we did that test, and more people who... Uh, and, and people seem to get better with your treatment than cognitive behavioral therapy. I think what you're telling me is that you would, that would strengthen your belief in what you do. Correct. Let's say the opposite happens. I'm not saying this is the case, but let's say more people get better with cognitive behavioral therapy with, than with the treatment that you do. Would you reduce your confidence in your belief at that point? 
um, I would reduce my confidence and my belief in myself as a shaman. Okay, but not in the th- the treatment. You're saying correct. Okay. So there and just, are, and just, are, just, just for, to help me understand, just for a second, I'm just trying to understand. So, if shamanistic shamanism treatment did work better, you'd have more confidence in it. And then if cognitive behavioral therapy worked better, you wouldn't necessarily have more confidence in it. And I'm just trying to understand the despair. So, just trying to understand. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Right. So you have your. Um, I can't think of the word. So you have. If I am the shaman, mm-hmm. for instance, who mm-hmm. tries to help people with PTSD, yeah. and it doesn't work as great as this talented um, psychologist over here, then what has to happen is you have to get, again, back to what we were saying, 500 shamans, uh-huh. 500 therapists. Okay. A couple of thousand people with PTSD, and okay. then you run the numbers. Okay. and if Because, we- right, you were asking me, does it reduce... It might reduce my belief that I am an effective shaman yeah. in soul retrieval. But if, if, let's say we ran that study. Yeah. And might have been run, maybe not. I have no idea. And if the 500 people who uh, underwent shaman, sh- shamanistic... Shamanic. Shamanic, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm saying that wrong. Uh, shamanic treatment for PTSD. Uh, and if it came out that... It seems like shamanic treatment worked better than uh, cognitive behavioral therapy for PTSD. That would strengthen your belief? I don't think it would strengthen it. I believe that it works. So oh, okay. I, I don't think it would strengthen it. Oh, okay. It wouldn't strengthen it. What would strengthen your belief then in shamanic therapy? Like make it stronger. Than it already is. Well, I know it's already it's, a seven, so I'm at the top. The, and you, nothing <laughs> would make it a ten out of seven. I mean, I know that's kind of hard. To, is there anything that you would can think of make it even stronger, or in your mind? I mean, the only thing that can make it stronger is, <clears throat> you know, if you could just do it faster. Let's say we could just boom fix everybody in one session. So you do it faster. Right. Yeah. Right. And if it happens, if it happens slower, that wouldn't reduce it the other direction. It's just you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I really am trying to understand how it is you believe what you believe. Like, what is the primary reason that if that reason were to change for some reason, then your belief might change. I'm not saying that would happen, but I'm just trying to think of the primary reason why you believe it. Like what, if someone were to ask, ask you, Elaine, what is the one reason why you believe that this belief is true and real? What would you tell them? I can see it. I can hear it. Yeah. And I can confirm it. You know, I have things that happened in my life that, just as the story I told you about the ghost in the house. Yeah. That's, it's like, it's very clear who that ghost was, how he got there. And, you know, I have a lot of other stories like that. So, for me, there's just, there's no argument against it. It's a personal experience. Personal experience. Yeah. As an outsider, if you want, if you wanted to an outsider to know that your belief is true and they wanted to rely on some objective evidence maybe that your belief is true so they could maybe hang their hat on something is there something we could tell them something we could help them with to show the belief is true i you know i think part of it is um Cultural. I think people aren't listening. So is there not they, a way we could show them? There's not a... Well, they, no, you have to show yourself because how else is something true? <clears throat> you know, if you, for if instance... if they really try to show themselves and right, they, but and they let's, can't... Let's say you're, I don't know, you probably have better examples of this than I, but let's say you're a Catholic okay. and you witness a miracle. Yeah. Right? Okay. Maybe we'll go back to another car accident. 
Okay. So you go to a car accident and you see a 95 pound woman pick an automobile up off of a child and then you see an, a, an angel show up. Okay. Maybe you see that. Okay. I think at that point you might decide that angels exist. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. So it's it's got to be personal. You know, and I think people need to slow down, not always be inundated with, you know, television screens and um, whatever else. And to, if you focus on it, you know, it'll, if you focus on it and learn about it, it's it's likely to show up. And if it doesn't, does that person, is that person who says that, whatever belief is not true and real and someone else says that belief is is true and real is there any way we could find out an objective truth what's what's real in the world what's you know is there anything we can do at that point or is are these beliefs impossible to find that information out on well it's not impossible do you want another story well, it seems like you're giving me personal experience, right? And 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 I get the power of personal experience. I do. And if someone wants to believe in the belief and they just want to know what's objectively true, not based on personal experience, maybe what's what it doesn't matter what they believe, it doesn't matter what you believe, it doesn't matter what Frank believes, it's just true. How could we help that person? How could we how could we show that? You know, I think the best way is through stories. You know, somebody had a book of all of these kinds of stories that have corroborative evidence behind them. Then I think people will say, oh, that could be true. And then once you say, oh, that could be true, then it's far more likely that you yourself will see those things. Because, you know, people who are um, committed to not believing are never going to see a miracle how does whether a person believes in something affect whether that belief is true or whether they can see that i think probably in the spiritual realm i think there's some kind of contract about free will You know, that... um, Well, for example, if I choose to believe that my dog is not sitting right there, can I then not see the dog? Or if I choose to believe that there's a cat sitting next to my dog, can I then... Can I make that happen? I mean, if you're crazy, sure you can, (laughs) you know. Sure you can, I guess. There must be a way for that to happen, but... Well, I was just trying to say, like, why me believing or wanting to believe something how that affects okay uh all right so let's say um that these other forces around us be they ghosts angels whatever you know that they're intelligent so let's take angels okay sorry we're gonna assume angels are intelligent light beings right and so they're gonna be respectful of you and if you say, I never want to see an angel, you know, I don't believe in angels, angels don't exist, the angel is not going to, like, knock on your third eye. So if I see angels, then there's evidence that they exist. If I don't see angels, then they're being respectful of me, yet they still exist. Correct. How would I know that angels don't exist if they don't exist? You can't know that. Do you think it's useful to know things that we can't know? No. But I just think it's useful to be open. Because there's a lot of magic in this world that we're not looking at. And, you know, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's just another dimension of life that so many people miss. Yeah. Yeah. With your belief, 
be it in ghosts or the shamanic tradition. And I'm not saying this is the case. But if your belief was incorrect, and I'm not saying it's incorrect, but if it was, how would you feel about that? Would it matter to you? Or would you feel hurt by it? Or, or would it affect you in any way? Or would you just go on living your life? Or It wouldn't affect me because, because what I see and do is lovely. You know, it's... Yeah. I get to talk to angels and light beings and help people. Yeah. You know, sometimes I can be on the street and all of a sudden somebody I don't even know and all of a sudden I get a message and I have no idea what it means and I'll just walk up to them and say blah 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 and they'll look at me like <laughs> and but that you know that's a gift that I've been given to help other people on this planet. I think what and I'm saying is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't care if it was real or not real. I, I don't really I'm, care where it comes from. Right. Well, maybe what I'm saying is, let's suppose, just as a thought experiment, that all that helping that you do for people, and you are helping people. You absolutely are helping people, and if they have PTSD, they are getting better, and whatever problems they have, they're getting better from those problems. And let's say, just as a thought experiment, that instead of angels or you know other variety of things that are hard to maybe show other people that are real. Let's say that it's coming from you, just you. Mm -hmm. How would you feel about that? Then I would say I'm a really beautiful storyteller and that would be fine. Then I am an even, even bigger magical being than I ever imagined. And it doesn't matter, you know, if I get to write this book or great things happen, kudos to me. I don't care if it comes from me or from wherever you know it doesn't it, that doesn't matter at all yeah yeah do you have a preference <laughs> i think i yeah i think so um i think i would prefer to know that there's just a lot more helpers out there yeah. that's not me i don't want to auto generate you know i'm a entrepreneur i run my own business i'm kind of tired of being always the the one who manifests everything. So are you saying like that it's, think it's that more comfortable to know that someone else is driving the bus kind of thing? Try, someone else is driving, kind of driving the bus or that there are um, guides and friends and others who will support you in your journey in life. That just feels better to me. It's more comforting to, to think that there are other people, beings in control and that it's not all on you. Or not even in control, but just offering their wisdom and their assistance. Helpers. That there are people helping you help others. Correct. And it's a nice to know that there are beings around that can work in your life to help you if you think that you're at whatever point not capable or ready or can do it yourself. I think it's just a, I think, I think the ego gets involved when you think that you do it all yourself. And I don't think uh -huh. ego has a place in spiritual work. I mean, okay. it has a place, but it doesn't need to be the driving force. So it makes you less selfish in that way, less inward, less narcissistic, less, less narcissistic, yeah. insular, mm -hmm. that I'm helping you, but it's not me i'm a conduit i'm the way i'm helping you is i'm other things are working through me to help you mm -hmm. what if we said i'm not acting as a conduit <clears throat> and it's not me it's not all coming from me it's you that i'm helping helping and i'm helping you help yourself well, isn't that, isn't that the greatest gift of all, if you could empower somebody else? Yeah. And then they can just go off and they don't need you. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the greatest gift you can give anybody is self-empowerment. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. 